Hello, Year 6. This is Lesson 6 on Monday, the 8th of February, where you are writing a letter in Rome. Now, to give you a bit more information about that, um, all this week you're going to be writing a letter in Rome as the man, back to your wife or family member, who's back at home as you sit in the trenches after your comrade has just died in your arms. Now, today, what we're going to be doing, just to give you some background information now, is that we are going to be exploring the waggle. And you are going to focus on certain aspects so that you understand what you need to include in your writing when you come to write. So hopefully this will be very helpful to you. Now, on Friday, you spent some time researching into World War I and looking into what life was actually like in the trenches. So you should have a lot of background knowledge now that you can pull on for your writing this week. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to um, various groups. And going forward, I'm now going to speak to yellow group. So hello, yellow group. Um, this is the task that I want you to do. Let me just cover this up so you don't just think, oh my goodness, what's all this? It'll all come clear in a minute. So yellow group, I've got a few tasks that I would like you to do this morning, and it should take you the whole of the lesson to do this, so take your time. Emailed yesterday to you, you would have had a waggle. And you should have that waggle in front of you now because you're going to do almost like a read aloud, think aloud, but with a focus. And that focus is going to be firstly to highlight words with the whole text that show A, affection and B, suffering. Now, I have here given myself a little key because you know I quite like using highlighters to do this sort of task. So I'm going to use a pink highlighter that every time I see a word that shows affection, um, I'm going to underline it in pink. And every time I see a word or phrase that shows suffering, I'm going to underline it in green. And don't worry, I'm going to show you how I'm going to do this on the first paragraph and then you're going to do it yourself for the first paragraph and for the remaining three paragraphs that you've got. So, then when you've done that, what I would like you to do is to then go to the text, let's get rid of this, go to the text and start to annotate it where you can identify the different types of sentence structures that are there. And also to identify the variety of sentence starters, because if you start to look at these, you can start to mimic them. But again, don't worry, I shall show you what you're going to do. And then your final challenge is... Can you identify the grammar that has been used to add description? Now, remember last week, you had a task where you looked for adjectable phrases and you include them in your writing. Can you find any of those or can you find a relative clause? So you have all your help sheets from last week anyway, which will, if you can't remember, it will tell you what these are. See if you can find those within this writing as well. So let's get started, shall we? Let's get rid of this. So what I have done here, is I've got my first paragraph. Now I've started to do task two, but let's have a look at task one. I'm going to get my highlighter. Hope I can draw in a straight line for you and start to look at things that show affection. Okay, dearest. Dearest is a word that shows affection, it shows that I care for Mary. So I could say my lovely Mary, my beloved Mary, but I've chosen to use my dearest Mary. That shows I care. It feels such a long time since I last show you. Oh, that shows affection. It shows I care for it because I'm saying, it feels ages since I saw you last. Okay. And also I'm asking if she's well. I hope you're keeping well. I would say that, sometimes you say that just out of politeness, but in this case, I'm taking the clues from the text. Dearest, and it feels such a long time. I guess I care for her. I'm showing that I care for her. Now, I'm going to look a paragraph at a time. So what I'm going to do now is I don't think, i just have a quick look. I don't think there's anything else that shows I care or have affection in this, just in this first paragraph. No, there isn't. So then I'm going to go to my green. I look for things that are going to make life pretty uncomfortable, to show that I'm suffering, show that I'm in pain or I feel uncomfortable. So things are going badly wrong here. Well, that shows that something's going wrong. And if things are going badly wrong, bearing in mind I'm in the trenches, I'm going to be suffering, aren't I? Uh, the trenches we built have become full of rainwater. Well, that's going to cause suffering because if it's full of rainwater and I'm living in them, I'm going to get extremely wet. Oh, look, I've expanded on that with this sentence here. It says here that all the, the trenches have turned into valleys of mud, stone, and water that soak our socks within minutes of us standing up. So 
I'm sure that sometime in your life you've experienced wet socks and you know how uncomfortable they are and how they can rub on you and cause your blisters or make your feet very, very sore. In fact, I seem to remember from the research that um, we did on Friday that one of the facts that we found was that um, if you have wet feet, you've got something called trench foot, which um, is a symptom um, of having wet feet and certainly causes suffering. So I just want a decent meal, the food we receive, tins of food we receive is stone cold. Okay, if you had stone cold meals, which was supposed to be hot time and time again, then I think you would be suffering, wouldn't you? You just want, particularly if it's cold and wet, all you want is a warm meal and they're not getting that. So I have done that for the first paragraph. I'm not gonna go and do it for the second or the third or the fourth one because you're going to do that. So I've done this one here. I can safely say I've done that for the first paragraph. So now I'm gonna to have to look at this. So annotate the text, identify the sentence structure and identify the variety of sentence starters. Okay, that's two things there. So what type of sentence is it? And what type of sentence starters have we used? Okay, so here we go. This here, I hope you're feeling well, it's a short sentence, it's a simple sentence. It has a verb and a noun, it's a main clause. I've identified that, that's all I want you to do. And here, it feels such a long time since I last saw you. This is a complex sentence because it's giving detail. So here, let's move on here. I'm looking at this sentence now. There are now huge valleys of mud, stone and water that soak our, into our socks within minutes of a standing up. Lots and lots of description there. Now the clue is, um, if you're not sure, there'll be lots of description. You have got commas in here to break up your clauses and to separate your list of nouns here, mud, stone and water that soak into our socks with minutes of standing up. So that is a clue that's saying it's a complex sentence. If you see lots of description used within it and there's commas within that sentence, you know it's going to be a complex sentence. So, what have we got here? Let's look at this one now. Because I haven't identified sentence starters yet. So here, look, easy one to start with, yesterday, fronted adverbial of time. And remember, my adverbs always have a comma. So if you see a comma after one word or a phrase, then you know it's an adverbial of some sort. Um, so that's a big clue for you as he turned to fight. Complex sentence, starting with a subordinating clause, as he turned to fight. He collapsed on me, screaming in agony, like an injured animal with his eyes wide and terrified. Again, look, you have got a comma, a comma, a comma, splitting up your phrases. So that's a very big clue. Even if you didn't recognize it starting with a subordinating clause, because there's lots of information, lots of detail in there. It's a complex sentence. Here, oh, I've started my sentence with an ing word. Now you know that an ing word um, is a verb, it's watching um, in this case. So I started my sentence with a verb. And here, I've got a fronted adverbial of time, just moving my face out of the way there. And here, right at the very end, we have got ourselves a rhetorical question. Do you remember that wonderful day all those years ago? Okay, so yellow group. First thing I want you to do, remember is highlight the words that show A, affection and B, suffering. Give yourself a key and go through the text and do that. Then take each paragraph at a time and start to annotate the text, identifying the three different types of sentence structures you can have. Remember the simple, compound, complex. So here we've got a simple sentence, a short, a short sentence, that's a clue. So it's going to possibly be a simple sentence. Has it got a verb and a noun in it? Does it make sense on its own? Then it's going to be a short sentence. Remember the clues I've given you when I've been talking you through this example. And remember, can you identify any of your challenges? Can you identify the grammar that's been used to add the 
description. So yellow group, that is your task for today. When you have done it, I would like you to go back through your waggle. Is there anything else that you feel you want to identify or to make a note of that you feel you could possibly use in your letter writing throughout this week? When you've done that, you have now come to the end of the lesson. Don't forget to send it into your class teacher at the end of the day.